college football <laughs> combined 85 points. Uh, yeah, I would say it was a wild game at the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. Bob Stoops now 11-7 and against his hated rivals from Austin, Texas. Sooners come out on top 45-40. And you might remember me saying this just a few days ago on my weekly matchup show. If you don't know what that is, that was my pregame. My preview of OU Texas. This is what I said a few days ago about this game. Final thoughts on this game. If you're looking for defense, you need to watch the Big Ten or some other conference or watch Kansas State and West Virginia play football if you're watching the Big 12. Because in Oklahoma, Texas, I don't see much defense. It doesn't mean that there won't be turnovers, but I do think big plays will happen, and there's going to be a ton of yardage in this game. I'm going to probably say anywhere from 950 to 1,100 total yards of offense because, again, both teams come in banged up, and both teams come in still trying to solve their defensive issues. Does Charlie Strong make a difference as far as defensive coordinator as opposed to Vance Bedford? I don't know. I have no idea. We won't know until Saturday. I look for the Sooners to win the game, but they're not covering. Ten and a half, just way too many, many points in a game like this. I think it's going to be 41-35, Sooners by two field goals. They'll win by six, but 10.5 points, too much for my blood to say that the Sooners are going to cover by double digits. Uh-uh, not going to happen. Yeah, I did say 41-35. I do believe I heard that from the good ear. <laughs> Ended up being 45-40, but you know what? Both, both the prediction and the actual final score had a lot in common. High-scoring game, Sooners won, and OU did not cover the spread. So not bad. Not bad by the sports fine. I also said, too, that the total yards would be somewhere around 950 to 1,100. Hey, 1,097 total yards. So it was three yards shy of the 1100 mark. But I didn't have any clue that the game at halftime was going to be, well, by Big 12 standards, low scoring. 14 to 13 Sooners by a point at halftime? Are you kidding me? How could this happen? This is supposed to be a Red River shootout. At halftime, it looked more like a um, more like a Texas Hold'em. <laughs> Sooners had no problem moving the ball in this game. You know, even in, in, even in the first half, um, running no problem. P Ryan, huge day, 214 yards rushing. Looked like the Samaje P Ryan of old. You know, D.D. Westbrook would have a huge overall game. You know, 232 yards receiving. That was a Sooner record. By the way, first time ever in Sooner history that a receiver would break 200 yards receiving and a running back would rush for over 200 yards in the same game. Never happened before until until October the 8th in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl. How about that? And, by the way, if you're curious, most combined points ever in the OU Texas game, 85. Of course, they've been playing that game forever. Uh, but highest scoring Red River shootout ever. Hard to believe. Um, hard to believe when you consider that the first half, only three combined touchdowns and 27 combined points. Again, the Sooners didn't have a problem moving the ball. It was finishing drives. It was finishing drives. The effort was there. They definitely brought plenty of physicality, unlike the piss-poor efforts that we had seen last year when they lost, two years ago, when they should have lost, and three years ago when they got beat. Texas was a more physical team, but today the Sooners definitely brought their own guts. They definitely brought plenty of muscle and physicality, and that's what you need to win this game. And that's also, too, what you need to run the ball effectively, and they did that uh, big time. Again, uh, the Sooner offense, the offensive line, can't say enough about those guys. In my opinion, they're, they're the ultimate heroes in this game. Of course, you know they don't get the... The highlights and all that great stuff, but um, they've had to deal with adversity, moving players around, and injuries too. But they've been a consistent group. They've been the one constant for the Sooners. They'll definitely be commended for their effort to, today throughout. But the Sooners couldn't finish drives. They, they, their execution was lacking in the first half. A um, couple of interceptions will do that early on. Texas entered this game with only one uh, pick from the secondary. They got two from Dylan Haynes, defensive back, um, I think in the first seven, eight minutes of the game. <laughs> first one was not Mayfield's fault. Andrews has to learn how to hold on to the ball. Didn't secure it. Haynes was in the right place at the right time. The second one, though, I do blame 
on uh, Mayfield. Got to make better decisions in, in that circumstance. But but he, but definitely Mayfield would atone for it. He'd make up for it. And the guy who's who, you know had lived in Austin, Texas, you know, it had to be sweet for him. Nearly 400 yards throwing, only nine incompletions. And by the way, today threw for three touchdowns and ran for another. Baker Mayfield looked like the Baker, Baker Mayfield of last year in the course of much. P. Ryan looked like the P. Ryan of old uh, with 214. Good thing because Joe Mixon, who's typically reliable, typically a game uh, breaker, well, today um, he was contained and maybe mentally as well because he only had three yards per carry, had a hard time handling the pitch, you know, okay? Had a costly fumble, almost had another one um, late in the game when the surgeon tried to melt the clock. Thankfully, he was able to recover it to set up Seibert's. Um, Austin Seibert's uh, field goal that moved the lead to 11. And also, special teams was a disaster for him, muffing one punt, beginning it back and having another punt touch him late in the third quarter, and Texas was able to get possession. So I just look at it as a bad game for Mixon, okay? He'll bounce back because terrific players bounce back. I mean, you're going to have a bad game, even if it's a game like this. So to me, I look at this game as a speed bump and no way a roadblock uh, for his terrific career. Um but the Sooners in that opening half, uh, they were having a problem finishing drives and a missed field goal early on. And that's why the defense in that first half was so pivotal. The coverage was actually good. Okay, They, they covered well. Jordan Thomas, I thought, really covered well. Micaiah Quick early on did a good job, and then he gets hurt. He's out six weeks now, so we won't see him until probably Bedlam in early December. That really hurts a unit that's already had some injury problems entering this game and that injury problems um, as we find out after the game too. Um, you know, with the Mod Thomas now concussion protocol and Will Johnson who was questionable entering this game didn't play. We already knew about Tay Evans with concussion issues that forced him to retire the outside linebacker who started. So you name the problem the center defense has had it. So in their defense, no pun intended about the OU defense, they had to deal with injury bug 101 right there. But in the first half, they did a real good job. I think Texas only had like 103 combined total yards, although the second half, of course, all those defensive stats for both teams would straight, go straight to Hades. But first half, a combined 27 points uh, by the teams. You might be thinking, well, the Sooners had to feel a little deprived, you know, because they only led by one. But Texas is going to tell you now, wait a second. We forced three turnovers in the first half and four for the game. Yeah, how many points did Texas score off of turnovers, off of four turnovers? They had three points off of the four Sooner turnovers. You remember my saying that I've heard for so long that I've used on the show more than once, three turnovers, you should lose. Four, you will lose. Well, that's typically the case, but as Kerry Elves from the movie Twister might say, well, let me enlighten you. Texas was not opportunistic, okay? They didn't take advantage of the miscues and sometimes getting good field position. Um, Shea Bouchelle was not his best in half number one. You can tell he looked like a freshman, having some miscues, but also, too, throwing into good coverage as well. Um, he had more incompletions than completions in half number one, but that would change later, and I'll explain why in just a minute. Um, but Texas, you know, they're going to tell you that you know they should have um, had the lead, perhaps. I mean, they had... Um, you know, one particular takeaway that only resulted in three points, a short field goal. And then after OU took the lead at 14-13, uh, Texas got one last drive before halftime, or 14-10, excuse me, Texas driving late, got close, had to sell for another short field goal. So talk about possibility of eight points right there that could have gone in the Texas column and them leading 21-14. But it didn't happen, and they still entered the locker room at halftime down by a point. So Texas will tell you that they had opportunities that they let just piss away. So 27 combined points at halftime, thinking, you know what, the defenses are doing their part, especially Oklahoma's. And then the first seven minutes of the third quarter, uh-uh, offenses were ready to roll, and we got the shootout that we thought we were going to get. Touchdown, Texas. Shane Bouchel started to look like a veteran, started to look more comfortable, and the receivers were where they should have been and making the catches, not dropping them. Texas would lead. Oh, you'd come right back with Mayfield to Westbrook. And then Texas would come right back. 27-21 horns. And then the Sooners would come right back. 28-27. It was like a heavyweight fight. Uppercut, uppercut. Bam, 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 bam. I thought I was playing punch out. Okay, on, on genius level or high level, whatever you call it. Highest level you can have. It was a slugfest. And then the Sooners finally got a stop and we get another touchdown. Green with a big catch to set up a Mayfield um, short run, 35-27. 
Oh, you get to stop. You think, all right, this game's the Sooners. And then, of course, Mixon, we mentioned it before, ball touches him on the punt. Texas gets it deep in OU territory. And we got to see the new guys really show what they could do. Will Silverwind, Silverwind at safety, comes up with a big interception in the red zone. Texas threatening. The interception was so big in that, in that particular moment because the center offense you know, only had to punt twice in that entire second half. Only twice. Um, I believe only, Actually, I take that back only once. And when you have an offense that is moving the ball on the ground and through the air like the Sooners were in that second half, you can get a takeaway. And Texas had very few today. They, they, they didn't turn the ball over much. It was pivotal. And that play was devastating toward Texas because they were threatening to cut the lead to two and maybe tie it if they get the touchdown and a two-point conversion. But instead, Severland turns him away, and OU dodges trouble late in the third quarter, entering the fourth. And then the Sooners again would mount a fantastic drive, eat time off the clock, and third down conversions were so big. First half, Sooners not so great on third down conversions, but second half, made six of their first six third downs in the second half. Fourth quarter, keeping the Texas defense on the field. You knew at that point they had to be whipped. I know Charlie Strong took over the defense this week, demoted uh, defensive coordinator Vance Bedford to a positions coach. Didn't matter. Didn't help. Texas today gave up 672 yards. No Texas defense had ever given up that many in the game. But they've been playing football at Texas uh, I can't tell you how long, but well over a century. And they give up nearly 700. So Charlie Strong taking over the defense. You know, give him gumption for trying. Give him credit. Give him fortitude for trying to make things change for the Texas defense. But in the end, did not matter. Sooners had a big offensive day and would uh, get it to 42 to um, get it to 42-27 in that particular moment early in the fourth quarter. Then the Sooners had to hold on in the end. Um, the defense was having their struggles, and I will tell you this. I give credit to number 33 for Texas, and that is Deontay Foreman. Guy brought his own guts. The guy left everything on the field. He was just as strong in the fourth quarter as he was in the first, and remember, he had a notable injury last week against Oklahoma State. Today, two touchdowns, 159 yards. He did everything he could to try to keep Texas in this game. And I give credit also, too, to Bobby Evans for that crucial fumble recovery when OU's trying to run out the clock with about a minute to go. It's third down around midfield. And we see Mayfield, whoop, psh, loses the ball. Evans is right there to recover it. And even though OU'd have to give up the ball, at least they got to kill a little more clock and punt it deep. And Texas only had about 15 seconds. And... About 90 yards to move it. Yeah, um, it was going to take the miracle of miracles for Texas to pull off in that situation. That wasn't going to happen. Evans recovering that ball near midfield was so pivotal because if he doesn't, Texas gets it. They got about a minute plus 50 yards to work with in that situation with the momentum back on Texas' side. And the way OU's defense had played, uh, it, it, it would have been even more of a Maylox moment. But thankfully, I didn't have to reach for the M right there. So who knows about Charlie Strong's future at Texas? I don't know. Um, I'll say this. If he can win six of his last seven games to get to eight and four, I think he's going to get another year, at least. Um, but there will be more changes on his staff, especially with defensive coaches. And I think anything short of that team um, finishing eight and four, if they finish less than eight and four, I can't see him staying at Texas. Uh, they'll, uh, they will, uh, you know, Texas will get too much pressure from the boosters. Uh Otherwise, so for Charlie Strong, back on the hot seat, and right now that he's got to have third degree burns as hot as that seat is. And for Bob Stoops, eleven and seven lifetime against Texas, had to sweat it out in the end though, forty five forty. But oh, you will take the win, move to two and zero in Big Twelve play, and haven't been at home in a while. Have you noticed they haven't been at home in about a month? Not since the Ohio State game, but they're back at Gaylord Memorial. They'll play Kansas State, whose offense isn't overwhelming, but their defense is pretty damn good. And Sooners will definitely have to bring their hard hat uh, for another 11 a.m. kickoff. will be on October 15th. And for Texas, they'll be at home. And that's ironic because that's the last time they won a game was at home. But that wasn't, um, that wasn't really any time real recent. 
It's back on September the 10th when they beat UTEP. So, got to play a Cyclone team that almost pulled off a win at Oklahoma State, but the Cowboys came back and won. By the way, if you're curious, uh, A&M in double overtime beats Tennessee with former OU quarterback Trevor Knight. So, Knight had a great day, and so did the guy that beat him out, Baker Mayfield. Spectacular day for him in the offense. And the defense played well enough in the first half and got a big pick from Sutherland in the third quarter to beat Texas and win the Red River shootout 45-40. Boomer Center.